Welcome to Serenity Cove Crafts. My name is Linda and today we're going to make an adorable little monster hat for children. It would be great for little toddlers. Now, on my 48 pin Centro, now this can also be done on the 46 pin Addy, what I did is I cast on with this navy blue. Um, if you're interested in the colors, this is Bernat Super Saver and it's royal blue. Okay. And the green, if you're interested, is Bernat Super Value and it is called Lush, L U S H. Okay. As you can tell, my central loves the Bernat yarns, it doesn't care for uh. An awful lot of them, but it does love the brunette. Okay, so I cast on with the blue and I knit 35 rows and then I switch the color over to green and I knit 40 rows of the green and then I switch back to the blue and then the last for uh, 35 rows of blue. Now, the one side here I've already uh, cinched and tied off. So we're gonna do the same with this side. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, I know it's, it's really hard to see with a dark color, but I'm just going to be reinforcing the closing here. So I'm just picking up the stitches that are on this last row. I'm just picking them up. Now, if you have your own preferred method of closing a beanie, go ahead. Use, use whatever works for you. Uh, this is how I taught myself, and so this is the way I do it. Okay, I know it's even hard for me to see the stitches in this dark color. I'm just going to pause this briefly while I make my way around, and I'll be right back. All right, I'm back at the beginning. Now I'm just going to tighten this, close it up. And I'm just going to tie it twice. All right, and again, I just like to ensure that the hats are secure. Especially when their kid's going to be wearing them. It can be a little rough with their hats. Okay. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to double my work. I'm going to put this side on the inside. I'm just going to flip it like so. All right. And now I'm just going to take the tail end from the outside. I'm going to feed it through the center here and I'm going to feed it through the center on the inside as well. All right, I'm just going to tie this off a few times. And I'm going to hide the ends inside the work. Now, with pretty much anything that I make, you know, I just tell you, tell you to go ahead and use whatever colors you want to use, whatever feels right for you, whatever tickles your fancy. I, I chose these colors because I figured, oh, we'll go with some, some of the basic colors here. It's going to be for a child, so. Okay, so I'm just hiding the yarn tails. I'm just hiding them in between the two layers here. I'm not going through this side at all. Okay, I'm just going through here. I am going to cut this, right? And, and there we go. Got our cute little hat. Now, what I'm doing next is I'm making 
the eyes. Okay, so with this I used, um, it was too hard for me to pull out my white yarn. So I just went with what I had and I have this Bernat <laughs> Premium. And this one is called, uh, I believe it's called Aran, A-R-A-N. Actually, I taped it up pretty good and I lost the color. But I believe that's what it's called. Oh, it's called A-R-A-N. Okay. And that's what I used. Now I made two for the eye. And on my 22 pin, I cast on with this color and I knit eight rows and then I cast off. Okay. So now I'm just going to be cinching both ends. I hope that this video, I hope it finds you doing well. And I hope you're you know, taking good care of yourself and taking time to be creative. This is what it's all about. Let's get creative. Take some time out of our busy days. Relax. Circular knitting machines shouldn't be stressful. It should not. I know when I first learned I was stressed, stressed to the max. I just, oh, everything challenged me. But, you know, if I had someone to talk to me the way I'm talking to you right now, I wouldn't have stressed about it. And that's how we're going to go about this. Nice and easy. And if we make a mistake, well, so what? We'll work with the mistake or we'll undo it and start over. It's, it's, it's all good. It's all good. So now I am going to pull it like this so that the cinched ends are in the middle. Okay, and this end here, I am going to use, I'm going to use this end for the outside. I just want to mold it into a circle here. Okay. Now with this guy here, I wanted the one eyeball going up that way. And I'm going to want the other eyeball over here just to be going down. So he's looking a little goofy. So what I'm going to do is the center. Normally when I'm doing a circle, I would feed the yarn through and tie it exactly in the middle. But because I want the eyes to go a little wonky, I'm going to... Actually, I want to see if I can zoom in for you here. There we go. So I'm just going to take this center hole and I'm just going to smush it, move it up over here, okay? And now I'm just going to take the yarn. I'm going to feed it through to the other side just to secure it in place, okay? And now I'm just going to kind of weave this. See that? Just kind of weave it in until I meet up with this tail over here. And now I'm just going to knot it. Don't pull too tight. If you pull too tight, it's going to, it's going to just kind of like make this buckle a little. I'm just going to tie it. Oops. Would help if I actually grab the right ends. There we go. Now, I'm just going to hide the ends inside the work. Actually, in this case, I think that I'm just going to leave one of them out. I'll keep the longer one out. All right, so I'm just weaving it in, just hiding it in the work here. Nothing fancy. We don't do fancy over here. <laughs> we do, we do as simplified as we can. All right, so just kind of wiggle that hole back up here. And these are just some black safety eyes that I have. If you can see that. And I believe these are 24 or 26 millimeters. But you know, if you don't have any eyes, 
You can go smaller, you can go bigger. You can do whatever your little heart wants to do, your beautiful, kind little heart. If you want to um, embroider, you can do that. Just embroider the black circle onto the eye. Now, I'm just going to put this here. And I'm playing, I got this new gadget and it helps because, hey, I'm getting old. I'm turning into an old woman. Oh my goodness gracious. So um, I don't have the strength that I used to have. So look at that. These are to secure safety eyes. And I just got that off Amazon. Okay, so I'm going to want this eyeball to kind of go down like that. It's going to be having these weird googly eyes. Now, because these are a little pointy here, what I am going to do is add just the tiny, a smidge of stuffing. I'm just going to add a little bit of stuffing underneath. Kind of like that. See, that just kind of will, will absorb it. So you don't want it poking through the hat and thing. So this one, I'm going to go kind of like, one's going to go up like this. One's going to go down like this. So what I'm going to try to do here is leave, I'll leave a couple inches, yeah, a couple of inches before the brim. I honestly, I don't measure. I've mentioned this before. I don't measure. I just guess. I just guess where I'd like to put something. Okay. So now we're just going to mattress stitch this. I'm just going to grab a couple stitches from the blue. And then a couple stitches from this uh, off-white color. Mm -hmm. And I am going to do this all the way around until it is secured on here. And I may add some more stuffing as I go along. And it's always, it's always wise just to, every once in a while just to check, make sure you're still on course. You're still following your own little path. And the great thing about these eyes is I figured if we sew them on crooked, they're just going to look like they're supposed to be like that. So it's all good. It's all good. You can do this. You can do this. Okay, so I'm just going to pause the video now while I sew all the way around here. And I'll come back when I get to the end. All right, so I'm coming around here. And I, w I did actually add more stuffing to it. Okay, so I'm just in the home stretch here. Just take your time. We're not in a hurry. Okay, so I am just going to tie this. The first. Oh, I'm so happy that I finally got my studio set up here. <laughs> I am, I, and if you've been patient and watching my videos from the beginning you'll see what I mean I just I, it took forever to get a camera and a camera arm and lights so that I can actually get the overhead shot and I was shooting on an angle my head was in the shot half the time so ah, I'm happy now <laughs> I'm happy. Uh, my my video should be looking a little better okay I'm just gonna cut that so I've got the one sewn on here and I'm going to do the same for this one. Let's see, you know what? I might make them touch. Well, I'm gonna to start off trying to make them touch. When I sew around and then pull the mattress stitch, it may end up separating a bit, but that's okay too. So I'm just gonna go ahead off camera and I'm going to sew this other eye on and we'll be back for the next steps. All right, I'm back. And see, 
uh, this is exactly what I mean. I had aimed to have them touching, but by the time I pulled the mattress stitch, they just, you know, they separated. So that's okay. We're going with that. Now, you'll want to make an I cord. Now, I do have two, two, two separate tutorials on how to do an I cord without an I cord maker. Now, if you have an I cord maker, go ahead, make yourself one. Um, in this case, I went, once I stretched it, I actually, eh, let's say it's about seven inches, give or take. And this one I actually knit on my 22 pin Centro. I did the five stitches and in pat, like as though I were doing a panel. And that's how I came up with this one. Now I do have a tutorial for that. And I do have another tutorial on how you can make one with just three stitches. And sorry, I just going into in a circle instead of the back and forth like a panel. You want the brim folded so that the green lines up with the green here. Okay. So this blue, I did it in the same color as this portion of the hat. This is going to be um, his lips. I'm just going to figure out how to put these lips on. So I am just going to grab one of the ends and let's see here. I am just going to tack this one end over on this side. I'm not concentrating too much right now on the shape of it because we will be shaping it to some weird shape. So we're just gonna just go in here and, oops. okay, just pull that through and just gonna go ahead and tie this. going to hide this end inside the work. Poke that little knot so it goes down. Right, and we're going to sew on this side. going to hide this into the end. Just poke that little knot in. And there we go. Cut this. Okay. So there we go. So just try to think of how I might like that tacked down. I mean, I'm going to just grab a little bit. Uh, the reason I cut the ends is because I didn't think they would be long enough to sew the mouth on. So I'm just grabbing a little bit more here. And I'm just going to be tacking. I'm just going to try tacking like this outer edge here. Okay, so let me just kind of start up here. Kind of like that shape because I have a tongue. <laughs> we're going to, we're going to have that tongue sticking out. Like that, it's cheeky. Okay, so just going to come in here. So I'm just gonna come in from underneath. There we go. Okay. 
Alright, so I'm just going to tack a little bit here. Just grabbing a stitch, going down, coming up a little further here, tacking this down a little further. I'm just kind of snaking my way through. There we go. And here I'm going to want it to dip down like that. Actually, I'm just going to zoom out so you can see a bit. There we go. Right. Now, if you are competent with a hot glue gun and, and confident in your abilities to not make a royal mess, then you can go ahead and tack it with some hot glue. Uh, yeah. I do enjoy using hot glue, but when it's something fine like this, I don't necessarily trust my abilities to control, my, to control myself with hot glue. So... I'm just gonna do it this way but you know I always try to give you options because I want you to have the tools to succeed I don't want you to be frustrated I don't want you to enjoy the process come down here come up a little bit just grab some of the yarn from up here I'm just going to head back through. Let's see. All right. You can see that. I know it's really hard to see the blue on blue. Now there again, you could have, you could change that to green if you want, or go without it. It's all up to you. This is your baby. You do whatever you want with it. The yarn is the paintbrush, and you, my friends, you're the artist. So you just just come up with your own little variation here. There, and just tying it off. There we go. Now I am going to hide the ends. And this side, I am going to tie it. Now this is the inside of the hat. I think he's adorable. So now for the tongue. The tongue I used a pink called Pink Macaroon. It's a pretty pink. Okay, so what I'm going to do is the one end here, I am going to grab my needle. So for the tongue, I did 10 rows on my 22 pin machine. Now don't worry about keeping a track of the counts. I will be putting them down in the, in the uh, just hit that more button and in the description I will make sure to put the the row counts down for you. And just gonna bring that Let's see here. So I want to, I'm going to leave this one. I'm only cinching the one end. This one I'll leave like this for the moment. And I'm just going to fold this over onto itself like this. So this will be the tip of the tongue and this will be sewn under the lip flap. Okay, so we're just going to be doing the same thing. Actually, you know, we could even just sew like this. It's going to be the bottom of the tongue. You can do the mattress stitch if you want, of course. 
I just want to show you this. Okay, I'm down towards the bottom. Let's see. I am just going to sort of stitch this. Actually, I'm going to feed the yarn through and come up this end. And now I'm just going to whip stitch this end closed here. Just going one side, coming up the other. Now this is the piece that I had at this end. So I'm still working on that one. I tend to leave pretty long tails. So I have some when I'm needing to sew things closed. All right, so I'm over here at the end. I'm just going to tie these two pieces together. This is the one I was just working with. I'm going to hide it into the work. Alright, so how should this tongue go? Okay, so the stitch side I'm going to be putting underneath and I think, yes, I, I like that. I like that a lot. So I'm going to sew that under. See, that's why I only did the, the outer side here so that I have this little flap I can sew the tongue to. Sometimes there is there isn't method to my madness, or there's madness to my method. Hmm, a little bit of both, I think. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna sew this on. I'm just gonna peel this back here. Now that I know where I'm going to put the tongue, or do we want his tongue to go out a little crazy angle? Yeah, I kind of think so. I go a little crazy like that. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull this back. And I'm just going to stitch, stitch this tongue in place here. And I apologize, I should not have done it in this color. I should have um, went with a lighter blue so that you'd be able to see. I'm just a little closer. There you go. I'm just so I'm just tacking that in. Come up here. I'm just going to tie this off here. There we go. Okay, hide your ends inside the work. If you want, see, there's the lip. You can see it a little better there. If you want, you could always tack this over. But I think I'm going to leave it like this and there we go. I think that's nice and goofy. All right, so I am going to finish making some of these horns and we're almost done. We're almost done. Yay. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. I have made an executive decision. Um, I decided that he actually looks better without horns. I started sewing some of these horns on, which is something you can do as well if you want. But I, I don't know, I think he looks better without. So I started sewing them and 
I just took them out. I ripped them out. I didn't like them. So this, we're just going to call it done. I think he's cute. But if you want, go ahead, do some horns. Um, if you want to do the horns, I did 15 rows and then I doubled my work. I cinched both, cinched and closed both ends, doubled the work, turned it into like a little beanie. And then I just kind of whip stitched around the outside just to control um, the layers of yarn that are in there. And then I had started, you know, mattress stitching around here. So if you want to do that, go ahead. But I think I love him just the way he is. So I think I'm going to call this one done. Um, as an artist and a crafter, I have a tendency of not knowing when to call it quits and walk away. <laughs> Especially if there's, there's glitter involved. Don't even get me going with glitter. But I've decided that um, that's it. It's time to walk away before I ruin it. And I'm so grateful that you joined me. And if you enjoy my content, go ahead, hit that like button, leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. I read all the comments and subscribe, hit that subscribe button. And I'm working hard. My channel's only been out for five weeks, but I'm working hard to bring you content. Okay. Thank you very much, my friends. You take care.